the tension in two strings involving static forces. Static forces refers to things being in equilibrium. So, it says a small bag of mass 10 kilograms is attached at C to the ends of two light inextensible strings AC and BC. So, so far, we're told that our particle C has mass 10 kilograms and it's attached to a string AC and BC. The other ends of the strings are attached to two fixed points A and B on a horizontal line. The bag hangs in equilibrium with AC and BC inclined to the horizontal at 30 degrees and 60 degrees respectively as shown in the diagram. Calculate the tension AC and BC. Now sometimes the diagram may be given to you, sometimes it might not. Now I'm going to redraw this diagram just so that we can highlight all the key forces on the diagram. So we've got A and B. We've also got our particle C and we've got our last line. Now it says that the mass of the particle C is 10 uh, kilograms, which means it has a weight of 10 g mass times um, the force under gravity, acceleration under gravity. So we're told that BC is on an incline of 60 degrees and we're told that AC is inclined 30 degrees. Now what we need to do is we're going to find the components of the forces acting upwards and acting across. So to do that we need to find the component of the forces from BC and AC acting both upwards and across. Now one thing I haven't labelled on this diagram is I haven't labelled the tensions from BC and the tensions from AC. So like we've done before we're going to find the component of T2 that is acting vertically and horizontal. So if you remember back to before, it's opposite, so we're going to be doing T2 sine 60, and the base is T2 cos 60. And if we do the same for T1, we want to find the component that's acting vertically and horizontally. So, opposite is 30 so this is going to be t1 sine 30 and the bottom one is going to be t1 cos 30 now we know all the components of the forces are acting vertically because we've got the t1 sine 30 and the t2 sine 60 as well as the weight acting downwards and we also know in the horizontal direction we've got this one and this one so Let's find the resultant of the forces acting vertically first. So, acting upwards, we've got the T1 sine 30 plus the T2 sine 60 minus the 10G. Now, there is no acceleration in this particle, it is, is, is equilibrium. So there's no acceleration, so the MA is going to be zero. Because remember, we're using the equation F equals MA. So what you'll notice here is we have two unknowns. We've got T1 and T2. So what we want to do first is just rearrange this so we've just got the T1 and the T2 together on one side. Right, what we now need to do is we need to find the components of the forces acting horizontally. So if we find the component of the force acting in that direction. So we've got T2 cos 60 minus T1 cos 30. And that yet again is equal to zero because there's no acceleration in the particle because it is in equilibrium. Now, as I said, you've got two unknowns. You've got T1 and T2, but you've also got two equations. 
So what we can do is we can rearrange one of the equations. If we rearrange this bottom one, we can make t2 the subject and then substitute the value in for t2 into our equation. So let's rearrange this bottom equation first. So t2 cos 60 is equal to t1 cos 30 which makes t2 equal to t1 cos 30 over cos 60. Now that looks pretty horrendous but if you pick up your calculator and do cos 30 divided by cos 60 you'll find that it's equal to the square root of 3. Now, the chances are in an exam they are going to pick an some values that give you a nice number which you can have in third form or fraction form. So check it on your calculator to see what those two values give you. Now we've got T2 in terms of T1. So we can substitute our value for T2 into this equation. So if we call this equation number 1, we're going to sub in what we just found into 1. So sub t2 equals square root of t1 into number 1. So let's just get it so I can see it. So t2 here is going to be replaced by what we've just found. Now as well, if you pick up your calculator and find out what Sorry, if you we're going to sub it into this one. If you find out what sine 30 is equal to, you should find it is equal to a half. So, t1 times 0 0.5 plus this is where we're changing it. So, our t2 is going to be replaced by what we've got. times by sine of 60, which if you do on your calculator comes out as root 3 over 2, and that is equal to 10g. So, if you sort this out now, first bet is 0.5t1. The second part, remember from core 1 that root 3 times root 3 is just 3, so it's 3 over 2t1 equals 10g. Collect that together you get 2t1 is equal to 10g so t1 is equal to 5g which is equal to 49 newtons. Now we know what t1 is we can find out what t2 is by simply summing it back into t2 equals the square root of 3 times t1. So if we call that equation number 2, so we're going to sub t1 equals 49 into equation 2, you're going to get t2 equals root 3 times 49, so t2 is equal to eighty five newtons. Now this video is quite a difficult video but if you watch it a couple of times you'll spot that all we've done is we found the components of the forces that are acting upwards and across like we've done before and then we've ended up with two equations with two unknowns here. So we've got equation here with two unknowns and one here. So we rearrange this bottom equation to find out T2 and then subbed it into our first equation we knew. Now remember what I said, pick up your calculator because they don't pick difficult numbers. Pick up your calculator and find out what sine 30 is equal to and what sine 60 is equal to and what cos 60 is equal to and what cos 30 is equal to. For some of you, you might even at this stage like to write in what those values are. 
to eliminate the signs and causes, which is what makes this question look difficult.